Welcome to my top 10 most anticipated comics for August 28th, 2024. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. Hopefully this list does help you make decisions of what comic books to buy because it's never too early to start that pool list for next week. Guys, before we dive into it, just gotta give a quick shout out to Whatnot. If you guys have not checked out Whatnot yet so far today, go ahead, check it out. Be a judge for yourself on what you think. There is a link in my description box below. When you click on the link, you create your profile and you win your first auction on there. You're going to get a $15 credit. So you got nothing to lose here. So if there's a comic book that you're looking to save some money on, you get $15 off. So why not check out Whatnot today? It does help support the channel. So again, it's much appreciated. Here we go, let's talk about the book that's on the hot seat. And the book that's on the hot seat today is Deadpool Team Up. This is issue one. That's right guys, Rob Liefeld has another uh, Deadpool comic book getting ready to come out and it's a team up book. And listen, I'll definitely probably check out this first issue. I don't know how long I'll be on board with this mini series or series four, but he is going to be teaming up with different characters like Major X, remember him, Crystar, Ghost Spider, Wolverine, Incredible Hulk, and uh, and a long lost Marvel character. So we'll see what happens going forward with that. 28 pages, this one is $5. Now the book that's on the rise. Here we go. And you're going to laugh at this. The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 56. And you're going to be like, what? Yeah, no. The only reason why this book is on the rise is because I'm starting to get highly anticipated that it's over. <laughs> so each issue, we get closer and closer for this book to ending. Its legacy numbering is at 950 at this point. Uh, we're going to get a 64-page comic for this one. It's going to be higher priced for $8. That could be a turnoff for some of you, but he is going to be, I guess, going against Tombstone once again, as that was the better stories in Zeb Wells' run. So we'll see what happens. Moving on to number 10. Here we go, guys. Chasm, Curse of Cain. Look at this blockbuster, craptacular book. I don't know. We'll see. It could be good. It could surprise us. One of the whole reasons why I wanted to pick this one up is because Cain. I have not seen Cain in a long time. He had his own series quite a while ago, and he's been gone ever since. So it looks like him and Ben Riley are going to be teaming up doing something. So we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully this book is good. This is 40 pages. This one is $5. Coming in at number nine, we have Ultimate X-Men. This is issue six. So a lot of you guys could have dropped this off. For me, I like this. This is just a different thing altogether when it comes to the Ultimate X-Men world. People were saying, well, they don't even call themselves mutants. They don't call themselves X-Men. We got that now. They call themselves X-Men based off of the last issue. They came up with a team name. It was kind of funny how they came up with it. The issue prior, they were known as mutants. So it's for, it's slowly forming into an X-Men type of title. It's just a real slow burn. And I know how that can turn people off. But for me, it's okay. I'm, I'm enjoying it. So this book is 28 pages and this one is $5. All right, coming in at number eight, and we'll see how this one turns out. This is Aliens vs. Avengers. This is issue one. Now, the big thing about this one is that it's written by Jonathan Hickman. So I want to see what Jonathan Hickman can do with the Alien franchise. Like, how is he going to make it different than, you know, people running off a spaceship and being murdered one by one, right? This time, it's like instead of that, we have the Avengers facing off against them. Could be fun. I feel like it's way overpriced though. It's 44 pages for the price of $8. Is that a turnoff for you guys? Are you gonna not buy it because of that price point? Coming in at number seven, we have Batman Off World. This is issue five. It's a penultimate issue, guys. This book has been out for a while and I forgot that this thing totally existed. I think if this has come out on a monthly basis, this would be a higher a uh, book on my list, but god dang, man, what's taking so freaking long? So we have Batman that's going against the Black Sun Mining Company, and he's obviously 
going to try to prevail against these people and he's teaming up with that starfire wannabe chick that he wouldn't hook up with earlier in the in the series so i don't know we'll see it's got great artwork i've enjoyed it i just wish it came out consistently this is 32 pages for the price of four dollars coming in at number six we have green arrow this is issue 15 an absolute power tie-in as we get to see the whole arrow family gather up together to try to defeat Amanda Waller and her goons. They also acquired um, Dr. Uh, Ivo as hopefully they can stop the Amazo robots and find a weakness within them. I think this book has been really good. And can they get Ollie back on their side once again? Again, another strong tie-in, I feel, when it comes to the absolute power events. This is 32 pages and this one is $4. Coming in at number five, we have Something is Killing the Children. This is issue 40, as this has been a great series of a bunch of one-shots in a way of learning about the early days of Erica Slaughter. And this is just the beginning, and soon we're going to get a new story when it comes to her. And I think what it's done is it's really fleshed out the character a lot. And the last issue, we had her in front of a shrink and uh, you could see the emotion pouring out of her. And I thought it was an absolutely brilliant issue. And anybody that has dropped off on this book, I wish you would pick it up again because I still think it's really, really solid here. This is 32 pages and this one is $4. Coming in at number four, we have Void Rivals. This is issue 12. Um, listen, they've endured the entire wasteland this entire time. They've uh, come across the Autobot Springer. Really solid book. We've got to learn about Derek and Solilla this entire time. And now it looks like they're going to be going against each other once again. You would think that they finally, you know, patched things up. But there was something there that kind of set Solilla off at the end of the last issue. What is that? I don't know. And then we still got the Quintessons going on in that book. That's tying into the whole Transformer thing on top of it. We'll see, man. 28 pages, $4. Well, top three, number three. We have the Sacrificers, issue 11. Man, oh man. This is such a good book. Last issue, we wind up getting to see a story about Saluna, I think her name is. And it was so good as she absorbed this black goo and she was killing people. Sorry if you hear a garbage truck, it's very annoying, I know, but that's my neighborhood. There's always people mowing the lawn, emptying the trash, doing the recycle bins, and it's hard for me to think. So I'm gonna keep going now. Anyway, black goo coming off of Sol uh, Soluna's um, mouth and killing people, and she doesn't know what to do, she's beside herself. And at the end of the last issue, she comes across people that you are familiar with in the series. Really great cliffhanger. Very emotional comic book that Rick Remender is writing. Can't wait for this next issue. Oh yeah, this is 28 pages, $4. Coming in at number two. We have another Rick Remender comic book. Guys, this is Gromits. This is issue four. And the, the guy's main character here is Rick. So I wonder if it was Rick Remender himself. But great nostalgia book, man. Takes place in the 80s. If you were a skater as well, this really hits home to you, right? Brings you back to the old days when you were a kid. And I love this book. This is just a basic coming of age book of high school kids skipping school, going skating, hooking up with girls or trying to at least anyway. They're going to try to have a party at the house and it looks like the father is going to give this kid some bad news. Maybe high school kids crash in the party. Who knows, man? Great artwork, great storytelling. I, I just love it. It really takes you away. There's a lot of Easter eggs in this book. 32 pages, $4. And remember, guys, after number one, we're not done as we do have those noteworthy comic books to talk about because... There's 10 books here that I'm showing you, but there's a lot of other books that are worth mentioning. So my number one most anticipated comic for the week is Rook Exodus. This is issue five, a masterpiece by Jeff Johns and Jason Fabek. You get lost in this world. This is just like 
action figures waiting to happen. I say this every single time. It's always a new and exciting adventure. You never know what you're going to see. It looks like Rook is going to be going against Ursaw. Ursaw is the bad guy in this book. And there is a possibility of our wardens starting to lose control of their animals. If you've been reading this book, the helmets that they wear controls all the animals and slowly and slowly they've been losing control, right? Uh, just, you need to read this book. This is a must read. People have been asking me, I just got back into comics. Uh, what should I read when it comes to an indie comic book? This is it. It's only on issue five. Hopefully you can find issues one, two, three, and four on the racks. If not, I am sure once issue six is done, you will find a trade of this because when it comes to the month of September, this book is not coming out. It doesn't come out to the end of October. So you can probably get a trade at that point in time, guys. This book is 32 pages for the price of $4. Here we go. Noteworthy comics, starting with Marvel. Not a bad book, just not on my top 10. X-Men issue three. Next, we have Fantastic Four issue 24. Then we have the Hulk annual, which continues the Infinity Watch story. So check that one out. Then we have more X books. We have X-Force issue two. Then we have NYX issue two. Then we have Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. This is issue four. Followed up by a new Moon Knight book. This is Phases of Moon Knight. This is issue one. Then we have Venom Sa Separation Anxiety. This is issue four. Followed by another Venom book. This is the Venom War tie-in. Venom War Zombie Oats. <laughs> this is issue one. Now we move on to the DC Comics. We have Detective Comics 1088. Then we have The Flash. This is issue 12. Followed by Zatanna, Bring Down the House, Issue 3, good black label book. Then we have Absolute Power tie-in. This is Task Force 7. This is Issue 5. Followed by Power Girl. This is Issue 12. More Absolute Power stuff. This is Absolute Power Origins. This is Issue 2. This is a solid read as well. Then we have the second issue of Nice House by the Sea. Then we have Gotham City Sirens. This is issue four. Moving on to the indie comics, we now have Saga. This is issue 68. Followed by Spawn, issue 356. Next, we have Sonic the Hedgehog. This is issue 72. New series from Image, Frankenstein, issue one. Then we have the continuation of Rogue Son, issue 21. Followed by The Savage Sword of Conan, Issue 4. And then we have Hello Darkness. This is Issue 2. And, there's, and there is all the top 10 most anticipated and noteworthy comic books for August 28th, 2024. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you love my content, there's more content right here for you to click on. And of course, guys, support the local comic shops. Keep buying... I can't think because of the lawnmower, guys. Keep buying, keep collecting, but always remember, read your comic books so we can always have great comic conversation. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and sorry about the lawn, guys. Take care. I'll see you real soon. Bye.